Hi and welcome back! In this video we will create a 2D version of tic-tac-toe game. First of all, create a new project using dub. Open up the dub.json file and insert the lips section to link against the raylib library. If you forget to add this section, you won't be able to use raylib library. Open up your app.d source file and create a new window. Alright, let's plan out the game. Firstly, we need to create a grid. Tic-tac-toe will consist of 9 squares, 3 by 3. Therefore, we will need to draw 4 lines, 2 vertical ones and 2 horizontal, separating the squares. Secondly, we would like to place a knot or a cross onto these squares. So the squares should contain X and Y position with height of the image. Thirdly, we would like to know the type of the squares, whether it is a knot or a cross. Of course, the player will be able to see them visually, but we won't. Therefore, we need to somehow track the type of the square in order to check which player has won. We will use a character data type for that. Now we're ready to start implementing the game. We will need an additional source file. I named it data. It will contain functions and variable declarations. We would like to purposefully divide the code into two files because it will be a lot easier to read and navigate throughout the code. Put some of your code into your new source file and import that module to app.d. Alright, let's start with creating a tic-tac-toe grid. We will need to draw four lines. I will create a new function for drawing the grid and using the drawLineX function provided by Raylib library, we can draw the lines. The function requires two vectors, containing the starting point and the ending point of the line, the thickness of the line and color. We start from the top of the window and draw the line until the bottom, from the left to the right. A vector2 variable is a struct containing two float variables, x and y. Now let's work on the code for drawing a cross or a knot. We need to create a new data type using struct called square. Each square will have a rectangle, which is a struct containing x and y position, width and height. And we also need a texture and a character data type to track the type of the square. It will be equal to an empty space by default. Next, create a constructor for initialization. And we also need to create a draw function to display the texture. Since squares have no type at the beginning of the game, we would like to return from the function and do nothing. Otherwise, we draw a knot or a cross. And we also need to create an immutable variable size to store the size of the square. Let's return to the main function. We need to load the textures, create and initialize square variables. Alright, now we need to work on processing events. We need to track player's turn. And we also need to know mouse position. What we would like to have is if the player has pressed on one of the squares, we would like to check if that square is empty. To get the i and j IDs of that square, we can convert the mouse position, which is a float divided by the size of the square to an integer. Thus the precision is lost and we get the exact i and j IDs of the square. So the first square will be some position x and y, which is less than the size of the square divided by its size. If you convert that number to an integer, you get 0. Thus, 0 is the first square. The same technique applies to other squares. Then we check whose turn it was to play, and then change the type and draw the appropriate image instead of an empty space. We also need to check how many empty squares we have left. If empty square variable is less than 1, then the game is over and it is a draw. In this case, we draw the corresponding text. We are almost done. What is left is to check rows, columns and diagonals of our matrix, of our grid. If they are all of the same type, 
a cross or a knot, then the game is over and we draw you won on the screen. We're done! Compile and run! That's it, have a nice day.